Hello, dear friends. We're sincerely glad to welcome you again. And today we will talk to the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, our viewers became very interested in the information from the previous video about cycles, when you said that cycles rule everything in our lives, whatever we take, cycles in the economy, cycles in the existence of empires, and cycles in the life of our planet, what you said that there are… Well, not only in the life of our planet, but there is also cyclicity in our body. There is cyclicity even in each of our cells. Therefore, cycles are the basis of the existence of life in our universe. You know, we look at everything sort of in a new way, through the prism of this information, at the events that happen in human life, at the events in history, and at the events related to the arrival of God's messengers. What you said in the previous video that both Jesus Christ and the Prophet Muhammad, it turns out they came to us during a period of decline. And you know, Igor Mikhailovich, it is very important what they said, that they brought knowledge about how we can save our lives in the spiritual aspect, about what is going to to happen now, about the coming events, about what we will now have to face, and how to go through this cycle. They talked about how important it is for us to become one united civilization, about the importance of respecting each other, as well as about the importance of working on ourselves and studying our own consciousness. And here is a curious question. How can this knowledge about the work of our consciousness and the work on ourselves be useful for us, human beings, in this period, in the period when we are transitioning from one cycle to another? Extremely useful. And if we look at what the Prophets actually brought, let's take what concerns every human being, spiritual salvation, and let's set aside all the religious sham, all the superfluous stuff, and let's just leave the mechanics of the process. After all, they described everything very simply and easily, understandably to even, excuse me, stupid people. How a person can gain spiritual salvation? It's extremely important, after all. And why did they do it? Not only was there a spiritual decline back then, again, there was a dominance of religion, which implies a lot of delusions and everything else, whereas religion is always aimed at manipulation. That is natural, just like politics. Basically, it is politics, but only in the aspect of the spiritual salvation of a human, so to say. And, of course, the interests of private groups prevail while a human is a human. And his task, and the whole purpose of his existence here, is to gain spiritual salvation. Both Jesus Christ and the Prophet Muhammad came and spoke about a simple path, and that it is actually much simpler than what we are told now in different religions that in reality the path to God is through love, and it depends on each person, that no one can gain spiritual salvation for you. And in reality, whoever prays for you, whoever does anything for you, this is just a shifting of responsibility. Just look, we've come to a very important point now. After all, spiritual leaders, our prophets, told us what exactly we should do and that no one but us can do it if we want to gain God's love, if we want to be saved spiritually. It's a simple, mechanical way. I would say, not a philosophical one. These are real steps, in fact, and everything lies solely through love, accumulation of love, and a realistic, absolutely realistic look at spiritual salvation, without any mysticism, without any magic, without any religion, but exactly a simple, ordinary, normal, kind of a mechanical way, you know, which gives real results. The Prophets spoke very simply. But where did religions and everything else appear from in our world? And what is the essence of religion? If we simplify everything, friends, if we really look, I'll digress a little bit, I believe it is very important today, in view of climate change, in view of the situation which we are all entering as humanity, in view of the problems in solving the issue of the survival of all humanity, I'll put it carefully, the spiritual salvation of every human being is very important. Why? Because 
It is the first thing we should be engaged in, each and every one of us. Why? Because the whole purpose of our existence here is to gain life eternal. That's what our prophets told us about. This is really true, and everyone feels it within. Whatever we do in this material world, it is all temporary and finite, at least for us. And it doesn't have any meaning to us as personalities, as people, as human beings. There is no meaning in anything that we would do here if we don't gain spiritual salvation. This is really so. Now look, there is a simple example that I hope many people will understand. We were told about spiritual salvation and that we must accomplish it ourselves. We were told about very simple steps that we must take. We were told that consciousness would resist and what we would encounter on the spiritual path. This is really so. Friends, if you are not lazy and study not only your own religion, which you should know thoroughly, but also other religions available to you, if we take at least Islam and Christianity and throw away everything that people have brought there, and it's a very important point, precisely what people have brought, then you will realize that what Jesus Christ and Prophet Muhammad spoke about is exactly a very simple, clear and understandable path where we will face the resistance of our consciousness and our laziness. It is on this path that we will realize that consciousness is not our friend and it is not us. And God's messengers mentioned that, isn't that so? However, they said that if we succeed in stepping over this Satan, while Satan is nothing else but something inside us that opposes common sense, God and everything else, then despite that guard, or demon, or devil, whatever we call it. In other words, that negative part that dominates us lives instead of us and creates a lot of problems for us. Indeed, our, I would say, animal part dominates us. And precisely this part creates priority tasks for us, which are reduced pardon me, to banal existence and a desire for something that we don't need at all. For example, you have a house while it wants a bigger one. What for? To make your neighbors envy you. Inside us, it constantly fights other people, us and everyone else, to get vril, meaning the power that gives it authority over other demons. The demon in us is just raging in order to gain more power over us and over other people. There is a constant fight for power. And the entire religion differs from the true path brought by the Prophets by one simple point. What is the essence of that point? The Prophets told us only you, yourself, can surmount the spiritual path. No one can gain God's love for you. The entire salvation lies precisely in love for God. And through God's love, you can be saved. There is no other way. If you desire material benefits on this path, even physical health, which is a material benefit, instead of God's love and spiritual salvation, you'll never gain this spiritual salvation. Yes, you can spend your powers on gaining material benefits, success, on getting a certain position, on making your body healthy, but you will pay for this with life eternal. These simple truths were explained to us by the Prophets, because a human cannot sit on two chairs at the same time. Actually, he can. Put two chairs together and sit down. Isn't that what consciousness says? Do you see how the demon explains to us that a person can get benefits both here and there? And it is precisely this lie from consciousness that begot religions. What did religions do? The fundamental difference between the true spiritual path and religious delusions is that all religions tell you that without an intermediary, nothing will work out for you. That there must be an intermediary, some appointees from God. After all, near the Prophet too, there were people close to him, just as holy and righteous as he was. As well as near Jesus Christ, there were people as holy and righteous as him, and equal to him, equal to Jesus Christ himself. Just look at what these people tell us to this day those who liken themselves. This is simony. That's blatant simony. 
Yet they equate themselves with Jesus Christ. They tell us that they have the same power as Jesus Christ Himself. Jesus Christ and the example given to us in the Bible, when He was crucified on the cross, crucified by us humans, there was a criminal next to Him, and Jesus forgave him, saying He would enter heaven simply because He accepted Christ. Hence, it is enough for us to accept Christ, but only through them, through intermediaries and the like, whereas you yourself, as they say, cannot do anything. And that's the fundamental difference. If we believe that we can shift the responsibility for our spiritual salvation onto someone else, whoever it may be, it means that we give away our life and we lose our spiritual salvation. The prophets spoke simply and clearly. That's why it is important to study, exactly to study thoroughly those words, just a very small part of which has been preserved in religions. Priests couldn't remove them, otherwise everything they built, all these castles, would have been destroyed. I don't mean buildings, I mean the religious institutions which they established, trying to explain to us the advantage and importance of religion why it is so important for us, and that without them, without intermediaries, we are nothing, because they are as much guides to heaven as Jesus Christ Himself. And that's what all religions are based upon, while in actual fact, to make us interested, to make our consciousness interested, they introduce, or rather, they introduced in their time, magic in its full form in order to make our wishes come true the wishes aimed at acquiring some material benefits, health, and so forth. In other words, they turned God into a genie. God was relegated to the level of an executor of our wishes. You know, sort of Amazon. You come, pay, order, and you get one parcel with health, another one with a rank and success, and the third one with a free pass to paradise. Well, that's the way it is. And the question here is, why did they actually talk about this, you know? If we approach it with common sense, even with a scientific approach, and remove all the chaff people put on those times and on our prophets, we will see that the prophets came and told us about the end of times. They gave us a clear understanding and knowledge that we as human beings can only be saved if we are together and not divided, if we don't kill each other in their name or in the name of God, but actually unite in love, in mutual respect. That means we will be together and will live righteously. Righteousness means not listening to the priests who manipulate us and onto whom we are forced to shift our own responsibility. And righteousness means living as the prophets commanded, to love and respect each other as ourselves. And this means that we won't hold any grudges or hatred in our hearts and won't try to dominate anyone. After all, that is what we have been taught, that there is no one superior or inferior, that we are all equal, that we are all brothers, that we should respect each other, we should care for each other as for ourselves. So if we use modern language, it really means building the creative society. And why is it so important? It's important because the prophets were perfectly aware of cyclicity. They knew very well what we would face. But I'm pretty sure they didn't know that we were going to kill the ocean. They knew that there would be a cycle and that humanity would be able to go through it without losses, only if it is united, if people care for each other and not for themselves and their own well-being, then everything would be fine. And they were well aware that precisely science and knowledge would play a huge role. And here, it's debatable. Some people will say, how did they know and understand that? And I will answer you, friends. Recall the Prophet Muhammad, how much attention he paid to education, exactly to the development of science. After all, it was very important in his time. And in his time, the processes were launched thanks to which we know so much today. But what did we encounter later? We directly encountered the fact that because of peculiarities of human thinking, laziness, 
and many other desires to shift responsibility onto others. We became religious people, but not God's people. Yes, we became religious people. We began to believe priests, and we began to suppress science to the dictation of the priests. So the question here is, why is it that, being people of faith, we fought so hard against science? It is so. In fact, if we look, both Christianity and Islam fought against science and destroyed history. But why? If they, namely the religious people, didn't destroy ancient libraries, didn't arrange military campaigns, and didn't destroy the history of humanity, we would have known much more today than we know now about past civilizations and many other things. We would have been much more advanced as a civilization. We would be united. And this cycle would no longer be a problem for us. That is, those climatic changes that everyone, even a stupid person, now understands that we have nothing to counter what is happening with the climate. And everyone understands that the end is coming. It is not somewhere beyond the horizon. It is much closer. And if the progression continues as it has been this year, meaning 2023, while we have no reason for a slowdown, then the unraveling will be very soon. And we have no countermeasures. We are disunited. So, what do we face in this case? A common human reaction. Even now. You know, this diary of the last human kind of already evokes respect, and it's a little bit alarming. It was clearly said there that authorities would start to curb freedom of speech and ban people from speaking. So now, we are facing the fact that some of our accounts, where we talk about climate, are starting to be blocked. Already, with such wording that all false interpretations concerning climate will be removed. In actual fact, only the UN can give an official opinion on climate. There should be a reference to the UN. Only their opinion is official and correct. If they can't do anything, hence, they are trying to suppress those who tell the truth. But why? Simply because what we say confounds the entire humanity. First and foremost, the powers that be. That's really true. Hence, we need to change the way this world is arranged. Hence, we as people need to heed the prophets. And if we proceed from modern logic, who are the prophets? Once there were people, they said something. Yes, they created a religion. They didn't create religions. That's the problem. That's where lies and manipulation is. And lies and manipulation are everywhere. Look how funny we live, right? And what we're coming to now? Remnants of knowledge. This is just sad. We have virtually destroyed the knowledge that was brought by the prophets. We have created institutions of manipulation and power out of it, filled it with magic, and we have led people away from true spiritual salvation. You see the result. In fact, we have killed our own ocean. That's the anthropogenic factor. That's what we've done. And why have we done that? It was beneficial, convenient and profitable. I mean, it was convenient for us, while someone else was making a good profit on it. That's the answer. In pursuit of easy money, we have destroyed what gave us life, and now we have complicated our own life. Or rather, not complicated it, but we made humanity's survival questionable. It's really true. And the prophets actually foresaw this. That is why they said that every person should strive to develop and save oneself spiritually. That's why they gave simple, very simple steps in spiritual development. Those steps that would bring a human closer to God and allow him to enter heaven instead of staying in hell. What is the point of us dying? Tell me, simply, truly and honestly, if you face the truth of the present day, billions of people who will be simply destroyed by the climate, and they will be destroyed by the climate only because we are stupid, because of our stupidity, because of our unwillingness to join hands and admit the obvious. We condemn ourselves, our families and friends to death. 
After all, several forms have already been held in which the situation that is actually happening with the climate has been proven completely. It has already been told and explained in layman's terms, on simple graphs, understandable even for, pardon me, stupid people, and still they fail to understand. In other words, they do not want to believe, to bother themselves with the problem. Why do we need it? There must be those who should solve it. Well, it's logical. Do you see what we've become? We really live in a zombie apocalypse. We just don't know it yet. We are indeed zombified, totally controlled and manipulated. There is a slave deep within us, within everyone, who is even afraid, really afraid, to do anything to save oneself. And now we additionally face censorship. We face the situation that our mouths are starting to be shut. And further on, there will be more, more tyranny, more repression, more deprivation of elementary freedoms that were declared and at least somehow maintained. Why? So that we don't panic. Because if we as humanity, 8 billion of us panic, we will start holding that very UN accountable. You have been fighting climate change for so many decades, while the climate is only getting worse. You've taken trillions of our taxes and allocated them somewhere, while the climate is only getting worse. When we are cornered as humanity, before we die, we will want to know who is to blame. That's the way we were brought up. And that's what the authorities are afraid of, and what they don't want to happen. But in fact, it doesn't matter where the money was allocated, and it doesn't matter which theory was dominant. If we as humanity now realize the threat that exists, if we understand that there is at least a tiny way out of the situation, and if we have enough elementary intelligence or desire and aspiration to survive, if we feel sorry for our children and our grandchildren, if we want to save the planet, then we must act differently. We must really unite establish the scientific center and indeed approach this situation with understanding as humans and not rummage in the past or blame someone for something as usual. You see, we, modern people, have a problem. Something happens, then we look for someone to blame. And we feel better. We won't find anyone. Really, we won't find anyone, in fact. What's the difference? What difference does it make? Who brought this situation to the culmination which we are entering? It doesn't matter what happened before. If we don't find the strength in ourselves, if we don't find the remnants of wits and at least a little bit of humaneness in ourselves in these difficult times to really heed the prophets and act like humans, to join hands, to sit down at the same table and solve this problem. If we fail to do this, then we deserve what is coming. In this case, well, let's just say, if the trend is like this, if people don't want to hear, and they shut our mouths so that we don't talk about it, then what's the point in talking about it? Is that what we have? Then what is left for us to do? To rely only on the truth that the prophets brought, that truth which comes from God Himself, about those simple steps that actually, mechanically and naturally lead a human to heaven, to life eternal. Then, perhaps, we should talk about this and forget about everything else. If we are no longer capable of anything, however, there is still a chance and it's a pity to miss it. Yes, they don't hear us. Yes, they will resist. This is natural. After all, they are humans. They are just as scared as we are. They don't want to die either and don't want to believe in what is happening. But do we really believe? Is human consciousness capable of believing that this world is on the verge? It doesn't want to. Do we really want to believe that we are building a house for ourselves in vain? that we are trying to build a career in vain, that we have decided to become bloggers in vain, that soon there will be neither internet 
nor anything else, do we really want to believe in this, that we are saving money for our old age in vain, that there will be no old age, that we will die much earlier and through the fault of, again, through whose fault? Through our own fault, in fact, because we have ceased to be humans, because we have stopped hearing each other, because a momentary attraction of someone's attention is much more important to us than the truth and the verity which the prophets spoke about. Our inhumaneness is exactly the cause of what is happening now. This is what our prophets warned us about. Look to what extent they were true prophets and how much detail they voiced regarding what would happen and is happening now. And don't we have enough wits to hear them? That's strange. A lot of strange things are happening in this world. But what is even stranger is that sensible, intelligent and educated people do not see what is obvious and do not want to see it. You know, like little kids hiding under a blanket from a fictional monster. Under the blanket, they feel cozy and calm. They no longer care about what is beyond the blanket because they have created their own little world there in which they are safe. Such is the habit of hiding from problems. But you cannot hide from this problem. It is our common problem, and we need to solve it together. Will humanity find wisdom? Will there emerge responsible people who will understand and hear this? Will there appear smart and sensible people who will see what is happening? After all, in order not to see it, one should be very dumb, I would say extremely stupid, so as not to see the reality that is taking place, and not to understand simple things, that we have no reason and no signs or hopes that something will decrease. I mean in those very climate graphs, right? Tell me, name at least one factor that would now be able to reduce the excess heat which is coming from the core of our planet and heating the ocean that we have killed. In all the current events that we see, a lot of floods, a lot of various problems, earthquakes, it will all actually just increase. Yes, there are fears in us, in everyone, and we will try to save ourselves by doing stupid things. Why? Because we no longer hope that someone will save us. And who will save us? After all, this year's history has shown itself and has demonstrated that people have no one to pin their hopes on. Because when trouble comes, a person is left alone with his trouble. At the most, he may get help from his neighbor if the latter survived, if he survived. That's the entire problem. Meanwhile, we keep pinning our hopes on powers that be, or on someone else, on aliens, just on anyone including religions, where their adherents are being told that God will take care of everything, God will save you. Forgetting to say that 2,000 years ago and 1,500 years ago, God already solved this problem by sending us the prophets who came and told us the truth. They told us about the events that are happening in our world nowadays. They told us what needs to be done for us to survive. Isn't that true? But they also told us what everyone should do in order to come to God. What have we done to this information? What have we done to the will of God? Nothing. Like humans, exactly what many people are now doing to the information which is actually available about the climate, to that truth. They are looking for ways to make money on this and to manipulate this information. Isn't that true? That's our essence. That's our truth. It's no fun. I'll put it this way. The truth is always tough. It is always sobering. But if you don't tell the truth about a patient's disease, he will fall into delusion and make plans for his future instead of taking care of his health right now, instead of thinking of how to recover. If a person thinks that he has many years ahead, not knowing his own diagnosis, which leaves him just a few months, 
What will happen to this person? Will his plans be implemented? That's exactly the question. However, our opportunities as ordinary citizens are limited. Yes, we cannot decide for the whole world. We cannot reach those who consider themselves to be celestial beings. But we can still do quite a lot, because we are human beings, and because we have such an opportunity because the truth is on our side. Friends, the truth that is confirmed every day. And again, this is our life. The first to suffer will be us. We don't want that. We have something to fight for. So we are the ones to find the right solutions all together. Or, if we give up as a community, we shouldn't give up as individuals. I'll put it this way. If there is no solution on how to save this world, then we should at least think about our own salvation. There is no point in living a life if a person doesn't enter the heavenly gate. It's the meaninglessness of existence. And having an opportunity to gain life eternal, there is nothing more stupid than to exchange it for a momentary illusion. After all, everything we gained in this life, everything we aspired to, take a look back. We studied, we tried to achieve something, then we achieved it. Tell me, what's the use of it all? What is the use of those worries, of those years, days or months spent? Whatever when you were striving to achieve something. Once you dreamed of buying something, you fought for it, you did your best and acquired it, and you have long forgotten about what you dreamed of acquiring and what you acquired. You worried about something, trying to achieve something, and after achieving it, over time, you just forgot about it. How many of such seeming victories did you actually have in your lifetime? Victories in what? In an illusion? which has now led to nothing, will give you nothing, and worst of all, doesn't guarantee anything in the future. Isn't this true? So are those really victories? The true victory of a human is the attainment of life eternal. This is indeed a victory, a victory over death. It's not when someone has won somewhere, and not when someone somewhere promises you that he will do something for you. Let this fellow who promises you this try to enter heaven himself. Just because he calls himself a follower of one of the prophets, what does this man have to do with the messengers of God? Nothing. It's an illusion, a simony. Relying on him is the same as relying on shaitan. You should rely on God and his prophets. And for this, again, it is necessary to make an effort in order to remove from the true words of the Prophets everything that people added for achieving their own goals in this world, which eventually didn't lead them anywhere. They have also become the same illusion as your past. Isn't that so? I mean, those people who distorted the genuine teachings of the Prophets are they actually in heaven? Of course not. They don't belong in heaven. So what's the use? They gained a momentary illusion. But how many lives have they ruined? The real lives of those who followed them. I'll just put it simply. Who actually followed these fellows? Those who are accustomed to shifting responsibility. Those who are too lazy to work on their own. Yes, this is work. You cannot enter heaven just like that. This doesn't mean you have to serve priests, and that's your merit. No, you must learn to love. While with the devil inside, it's not easy to learn to love God. That's the whole point. What you choose is what you will come to. The same is in our life. What we choose as humanity is what we will come to. If we choose life, we will find a way to subdue the climate Cerberus. But if we choose something different, then the Cerberus will be free and it will fulfill its duty. We won't like it. 
but it will be our choice. It doesn't matter whether we like it or not. If we make such a choice as humanity, hence it will be so. However, there is one point. Knowing the truth and the verity, having at least a little bit of inner understanding of the whole essence and striving for God's love, we cannot just give up the chance that we have, the chance to save humanity. It's the same as if a person himself would give up God's love. This is wrong. Therefore, naturally, we will do everything that depends on us, despite what is happening in this world, despite the resistance, despite the fact that we are being deprived of opportunities, and despite the fact that shaitan is fighting against us. This is his problem, but our problem is life. And life is worth fighting for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, friends. Peace and God's love be with you.